Open your eyes, Mia. Did anything happen? Loitering with intent, lawyer boy. Who, me? No. Why? What intent to do what? Help your favourite nurse. I need you to give me a hand shifting an examination table. Look, isn't Tom the resident muscle? Come on. So these voices that you hear, what do they say to you? They give me advice. Tell me how to live my life. But these voices never forced you to do anything? They're very persuasive. They don't like no for an answer. But they never made you... Try to kill my father? No. Until now. Hey, how'd it go? Uh, Mia, do you just want to head through to reception? I'll be there in a tick. What do you reckon? Crazy? Uh, mate, there are a lot of explanations why people hear voices. She stabbed her father for no reason. She's obviously mad. It's an open and shut case, yeah? Look, I'll continue to evaluate it for you, but I can't promise to deliver the mental impairment defence. Defence? Come on, little Spence. Don't be so polite, you won't get fed. Are you talking to yourself again? No, I'm encouraging the fish. Oh, Spence. Hey, I didn't name them, Sky did. Okay. So which one's Tom? Oh, let me guess. He got flushed on the toilet a few weeks ago, right? Mm. <laughs> She's at peace now. She's telling you not to be sad. She wants you to know she's happy where she is. She's watching you. She's looking after you. She'll always be with you. Sky, are you okay? Listen, Mia. Uh, what's going on? One star sign here. Tell me you believe in that rubbish. Huh? Oh, you shrinks are into pigeonholing people. Yeah, through diagnostic analysis, not based on the movement of celestial bodies. So you'd be a Capricorn, right? Spence. Olivia. Virgo, yeah? Yeah, how'd you know? You're always very clean. <laughs> I just met an interesting client of yours in reception, Mia Stimpson. Uh, she's actually one of Steve's. Yeah, he tells me she's on bail for attempted murder. Mm -hmm. Well, this attempted murderer just reduced Sky to a blubbering mess. What? How? By delivering messages to her from her dead sister.
Hey there. Help you with anything? Yeah, I was hoping to see the clairvoyant. mention these talents of yours, Mia. Would you have believed me? What? Oh, that the voices that you hear are voices of the dead? That skeptical tone is a reason I didn't tell you. Well, my skepticism's irrelevant. The belief in the nature of these voices, that's what's important. These cards represent your past, present, and future. Come on, Mia, I just want to talk. You paid my brother for a reading. Past card is death. It signifies transformation, a change in your life that has caused upheaval. The present card, the magician reversed, represents the borrowed robes of an imposter. You're currently surrounded by betrayal, falsehood, and trickery. Hardly a glowing endorsement. Your future card, the Queen of Swords, reversed. Mia, why would these voices from beyond the grave urge you to kill your Tales father? Tales of a woman. Mia, Mia, I just want to understand you so this I can help you. This woman is dangerous, manipulative, and possibly violent if crossed. You will challenge this woman at your own peril. Hey! You're Mia Shrink. The one she saw today? Yeah. Yeah, you're a brother, right? I'm Blake. I already told that lawyer Mia doesn't belong in jail. Well, that's for the courts to decide, mate, not me. Even if she did try to kill her old man, the prick would have deserved it for what he's done. As I told you, I'm a very busy man. Well, I appreciate your time, Mr. Stimson. Please, take a seat. I really don't see the point of all this. Yeah, the point is, I'm evaluating your daughter for her upcoming trial. What's to evaluate? She's obviously bloody crazy. Have you had any contact with Mia since...? None. Her or Blake. They're living in that weird bookshop. So I take it you're aware of her... Clairvoyant powers, oh, yes. Look, they started when Mia was seven, around about the time their mother died. Doesn't take much of a shrink to analyze that, does it? So, you raised Mia and Blake alone then? Look, as I said, I'm a very busy man. I've got a lot of appointments this morning. Mr. Stimson, why do you think Mia did this? I go to sleep one night, all happy families. Wake up a week later with this. You figure it out. And be sure to let me know. Listen, if you ever want to talk about your sister, just... Not the same as actually talking to Tanya. That Mia, some of the things she said, there was... Sky, I know you want to believe what Mia said, but it's not real, okay? Excuse me, Sky. Can I get you to make a urology appointment for Mr. Mackenzie? Thanks. You free this over? Maybe. Why? I was wondering if you could sit in on the session. Why do you need me then? I just think the clients would be a lot more comfortable with you in the room. Sure. My mother died when I was young. Dad raised Blake and me more or less alone. How would you describe the relationship with your father? Pretty normal, I guess. Did you always feel comfortable with him? <laughs> Would you say the relationship with your father was ever inappropriate? What do you mean? Well, 
Did he ever cross the line of sexual boundaries with you? I know it's difficult. But can you answer that for me? If you don't want to answer, Mia, that's, that's okay too. Just, it would help me understand you better if you could. Is this turning you on? Getting you all hot, all this talk about sex? Yeah. Is that why you're here? So the three of us can get it on. Mia. I don't get it. Why do you think Mia was sexually abused? I don't know, mate. Call a professional hunch. Well, oh, actually, that's good. Psychological trauma. We can tick the mad. Well, box. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm still evaluating her. Well, here you go, gents. A medium latte and a large double skim soy cap, half an inch of froth with a light sprinkling of the diet chocolate. Watching my carbs. Maybe ten bucks. Corkage. You got that? I don't know why. <laughs> Astro Boy's so not a superhero. Yeah, Batman would spank his baby ass and steal his little red boots. Of course he would. Batman's gay. The Dark Knight's not gay, babe. Ah, uh, single guy, silk tights, latex, lives with his boy Wonder. Gay. It does sound pretty gay. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Blake, hell! Mia! Mia, what's happened? Where are you hurt? Mia! Ambulance? Where are you bleeding? Can you look at me? Sense. Tell me where you're bleeding. Yes. I think I've done something really bad. Oh, oh. Steve, what's going on? Uh, Mia turned up at Canal Road just after six with blood everywhere. Not her own. And her father's gone missing. She's just being interviewed at the minute. Well, shouldn't a lawyer be in there with her? Yeah, look, uh, I've been meaning to clarify. I'm not technically Mia's lawyer. You know, I don't get it, mate. Technically, who is Mia's lawyer? Hi. Doc, what a surprise. You OK, Mia? All right, what's happening? What's your interest? I'm working Mia's case. Steve, could you please book Mia out? Yes. She not being charged? Nothing to charge her with. Yet. Oh, there's no body, no murder weapon, no witnesses, no admission, no crime. Just a matter of time. We both know that all that blood's gonna match her father's. Plus, she's got motive and form. So the sexual abuse is confirmed? What? No, her father was in the process of making a new will and writing Mia out of it. Dana, why did you ask Steve to get me involved in Mia's case? I needed the best expert witness, and you're it. Oh, that's rubbish. Oh, what do you think I wanted to be around you to bathe in your presence? You're flattering yourself. Miss Connolly? Is Mia being charged? No, Blake, they're releasing her. Oh, thank God. I've been trying to call Dad, but Mia can't have done anything to him. I just don't believe it. Okay, Blake, I'm going to drive you and Mia home. Come on. That was a great lunch, Malcolm. Now, that steak, that was a vine. And the cab sav, perfect. The wine was a Pinot. Pinot? Stephen, oh. I heard a very odd rumour this morning. Apparently, my daughter Dana and Dr McKay are collaborating on a case. So? I'm told it's thanks to you. Look, Malcolm, <laughs> I've done everything that you've asked of me. And I've broken the law. I've betrayed a colleague. And I've, I've compromised everything that I stand for. And the thing is, for all my spying on Spence for you, I've seen bugger all in return, to be honest. Now, Dana is actually offering me a job if we win this case. You like me, Kay, don't you? How enjoyable would that new job be if he finds out everything you've done to get it? Well, he knows. I told him. You've told him what you've done for Dana, but have you told him what you've done for me? What is it with Dana and Spence? I, I don't get this obsession you have with them. I'm a concerned father. Dana's fixated with Dr McKay in a way that isn't good for her. I want Dr McKay off the case. 
How am I supposed to do that? Good lawyers think on their feet. I hope I haven't completely misjudged you, Steve. Any news from your father? Mia, the police think you killed him for his money. Apparently he was about to disinherit you. Is that what you think? I think you were very angry at him. You think he abused me. My father never touched me in that way, never touched me in any way. OK, all right. So wh where is he, Mia? Wh what happened to him? Did he just pack up his bags and leave? The spirits wanted him with them. They wouldn't have let him go. So they convince you to kill him? Sometimes they take control of me. Possess you? I call it channeling. When that happens, I lose memory. All right. All right, you know what I think? I don't think there are any spirits. Come on, Mia, let's just be honest here. You tell vulnerable people what they want to hear, right? I do channel the dead, and they do speak to me. OK, maybe they're a creation of your subconscious, uh, uh, an invention of yours to justify the terrible things that you've done. Spirits are real. I'm on they your speak side, to me Mia. all the time. They're speaking to me now. I want to understand you. I want you to help there's me. A, there's a woman here. She Where's wants to talk to you. Where's your father's body, Mia? Do you Ellen. know Her where he put Ellen. him? Ellen. She, she wants to be known to you. Ellen. Ellen. She has a message for you. She's saying it's two years spent. Is it two years since she died? Tell me, Mia. Exactly how did she die? It was very sudden, unexpected. Her and Toby were killed in a car crash. Spence, hey, you any closer to a diagnosis? Anything further away. Me just pretended to talk to Ellen. Ellen? What, your dead wife? Sorry, sorry, man. What, what, what did she say? She mentioned Toby, the car accident. Nothing she couldn't find out by Googling me. So what are you saying? There goes our defence. No, I'm saying she's a fake. Which means she might also be lying about hearing voices too. Well, mate, I'm not saying she's not mentally impaired. I'm just saying she may be a pathological liar. Or maybe she thinks that she really can talk to the dead. <laughs> Mate, if I thought for a second that Alan actually spoke to Mia, I'd drop out of the case. Get myself a new profession. I'm off rowing. Hi, it's Stevie Nine. Uh, listen, I need to see you as soon as possible. Sorry for going behind your back and using Steve like that. I know I said involving you was purely professional, but I lied. I could have used a dozen expert witnesses. 
truth is I miss you, Spence. I miss talking to you and just being around you. Is that so terrible of me? You know what I think? I think we should focus on helping Mia. Where'd you get this music? This music's so sexy. Mia? Oh, baby, nobody's as sexy as you. <laughs> what are you doing? You gonna come dance with me? Okay, Mia, listen to me. Whatever you're doing right now, whatever's going on, I want it to stop. You don't believe it's me, do you? But it is, Spence. I've come back. It's two years. Two years today. Mia. Since I've touched you, since I've seen your face. Please stop. Please just, just stop. And this please. music's all making me sad and lonely. Would you dance with me, Spence? Are you gonna dance with me? Do you like them? I know that it's two years today. Hey. Uh, Steve said you're coming during the meeting room, is that true? What? I don't know, some strategy session with Dana? Do you know how long it's gonna take? Because I have a prenatal group starting in half an hour. Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Who's the admirer? Dana's here. We're up. First item of business. Mia is still facing an attempted murder charge, but this could change to murder at any time. So we need to be solidly prepared with our mental impairment defence. Now, the question is, what angle do you want to take? I understand there's a smorgasbord of diagnostic goodies to choose from. It's your call, Spence. You're the one who has to sell it. All right. Uh, I think... Look, I think you guys should find yourselves another shrink. Look, I'm not comfortable making a diagnosis here, but I can give you the names of numerous psychiatrists who would make excellent expert witnesses. <laughs> Are you serious? I don't want another witness. I want you. Look, I'm sorry, I'm just... I'm not comfortable with the mental impairment defence. <laughs> the woman hears voices, the voices tell her to murder her father. How is she not mentally impaired? I guess her impairment depends on the nature of these voices. Am I missing something? I just cannot state conclusively that Mia's impaired, all right? That's it. That's all I'm saying. So what is she? I can't say for sure. That she's psychotic? Schizophrenic, totally bloody delusion? No, that the nature of these voices aren't... What, aren't uh, real? Yes. No, no. I Look, I don't know. All right? I'm not saying that I believe in her abilities, okay? 
No, I'm just saying that I... I can't totally discount them. You believe the dead talk to her? I can't testify, Dana. This is about me, isn't it? You just don't want to help me. This has got nothing to do with me. Are you fucking her? What? Well, you want to tell me what I walked in on in her bookshop this afternoon? If you don't testify, I'll release this tape. How do you think it'll go down in the psychiatric community? Dr. Spence McKay professing a belief in the paranormal. Think about that. I'm sorry, mate. You're here early? Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Yeah. Sky told me. The flowers. Yesterday, two years since Ellen's death. Do you believe in life after death? Uh, I believe in good medicine prolonging the need to confront that question. Is this about Mia? I dropped out of the case. Why? Ellen. Ellen, what? I don't know. She came through her. Through Mia, she, she, she spoke to me. Maybe. Sounds crazy, right? Maybe. That's sad. What did she say? We, uh... We danced. You danced? Look, I can't get on the stand and say Mia's mentally impaired if I'm not totally convinced, right? No, you can't. Yeah, but for me to actually believe Mia, I'd have to be mentally deranged. Do you believe her? I'm a shrink, Olivia. Rational, clinical, analytical. So maybe there's another explanation. Tom said you want to see me? Yeah, yeah, come in. You look like shit. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I didn't sleep too much last night. I was just, you know, pacing the room. It's only five steps across, so... Like a prison cell? Yeah. What's up, mate? This about me? Uh... Sort of. Oh... I've actually got a confession to make. I'm a shrink, mate, not a priest. Hey, Steve, can I jump on your computer? I just need... Just five to... minutes. I was approached by Malcolm Reynolds in relation to you. Malcolm Reynolds? He made me a deal. He said that he would help me in my career if, um, if I kept an eye on you. Because he was worried about Dana, and oh. he, 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 he thought that she was obsessed with you, that you're screwing her. Look, I'm not screwing Dana. All right, you know what, Steve? Just help me out here. Just, what the hell has all this got to do with Mia? I burned a copy of your Sorrento DVD 
and fed her information from it. You, you did what? I told her that if she could convince you of her abilities, it would help her case. Because, you know, you said that if Ellen, if you really believe that Ellen was talking through her, that, and you know, Malcolm wanted you off the case, and, you know, away from Dana, I, oh, Jesus, I never meant for this to be personal. <laughs> How could it not be personal? I don't know. How could you do this to me, Steve? I'm so sorry, Spence. And what is going on? You prick! Steve. Yeah. I spoke to Miss Connolly this morning. She told me you dropped out of the case. You obviously think I'm guilty, and this is all just a ploy of mine to escape jail. I know about Sorrento, Mia. Steve told me what he did. The DVD. Now, I don't know what he promised you would happen if we went I along didn't with see this. Any DVD. What happened was real. I do have a gift. Oh. Ellen's around you. I can sense her. Come on, Mia. She's telling you she loves you so much. Mia. Toby loves you. Stop it! Now, I let emotion cloud my judgment. Did you kill your father, Mia? No, I, s I swear. Because I know what he did to you. I didn't. You can tell I me didn't. the truth. I didn't kill my he father. He hurt you, Mia. I understand no, that. No, no, no. He abused you as a child. My father he... never touched me! Even if she did try to kill our old man, the prick would have deserved it for what he's done. It wasn't you. It was your brother, wasn't it? Your father abused Blake. You've been protecting him all along. I'm stronger than he is. I, I thought if you believed me, Blake has gone through so much. He can't, he can't go to jail. <laughs> Blake Stimson's car was found at the airport. Father's body in the boot, bullet to the head. Blake Stimson's fingerprints all over the gun. What about Blake? Airport records show he flew out to Singapore two days ago. No info since. He could be any bloody where by now. What's going to happen to Mia? <sighs> Million dollar question, mate. We're still yet to determine whether or not she's an accessory. My appointment's back. Yeah, I'll be there shortly. No, everything's fine. Thanks, guy. Releasing her without charge. And the drop in the previous attempted murder charge. What about all the blood that she was covered in that night? Lab test revealed it to be canine blood. Look, the cops know that given a psych profile, they try to ping her with being an accessory, I just get her off with my eyes closed. You just need a more compliant shrink. I know I acted selfishly, but it was out of desperation. Blind ambition. No. My priority was Mia. I have more in common with Mia and Blake Stimson than I've admitted to anyone, even my former psychiatrist. I know what it's like to have a controlling father. She's all yours. I'll drive you home. I don't blame you for doing what you thought was right. Just like you.
Hey, you got a sec? Yeah. It's about Steve. Given what he's done, I don't think there's any other option. I'm gonna have to let him go. You know what? I don't want him fired. Even after what he's just admitted? Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of any greater punishment for Steve than to make him work here. Put him on a five-year contract. Spence. No, 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 no. I don't want him let off the hook that easy. No, when he walks in the door, when we cross in the corridor, in the, in the kitchen, I want him to have to look me in the eye. Okay. Oh, hey, I heard about Mia. What you do for love, eh? Yes. After everything, I just need to get away for a while. Yeah, I bet. Where are you going? Asia. Oh, my taxi's coming. I'm surrounded by trickery, falsehood, and betrayal. Should have taken you at your word. You cooked up this whole thing, you and Blake. What? You were covered in dog's blood. Yeah, I remember now. Um, I had a dog in my car. You conspired to kill your father for his money. You assumed the blame, played the mad card. No. And then with Blake's trail well and truly cold, you then led me to him as the killer. That's insane. It's not insane, Mia. It's perverse. Given that you're also lovers. Okay, so you figured it out. Big deal. Miss Connolly told me what you said about believing me. You're totally discredited. Who's gonna believe a crazy quack like you? Yeah, they may not believe the crazy quack, but they probably no. will believe the copper. Mia Stimson, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of your father, Paul Stimson. Not obliged to say anything, although no, anything you do not. say may be held in evidence. I need to tell you something about the accident about her and Toby's murder. Saying, don't give up. Remember, surrender. Remember, Stefan. Don't give up, Spence. Don't give up. Lovers, eh? Whoa. <laughs> That's what I call a close family. Spence. We're gonna be okay. It's up to you to figure out, man. So with, uh, with Mia and Blake, what they, um, they just planned the whole thing together, did they? That's, uh, that's pretty... Deceptive, deceitful. So you showed Mia my family photos as well as the DVD. She mentioned the word Zephyr, which is the name of our holiday house, which was in the photos. No, no, mate, I didn't, no, only the DVD. For a debrief? Actually, scrap the debrief. I am going across the river for a drink. Do you want to join me? Oh, look, I'm sorry. I've got to be somewhere. Let's talk tomorrow. Sure. Okay. I'll have a drink with you. You want to have a drink with me? I'm an Aquarian. I might hate authority, but I'm incredibly sociable. Okay. Come on. Dana? Hi. Hi. They picked Blake up at Bangkok Airport waiting for Mia's flight. She made a full confession against my advice. I need a drink. And given the day from hell you caused me, 
sets your shout. You know what? We've been through all this before. Thanks, but no thanks.